Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming Tech.com video. We're going to be further discussing the recent rumors regarding the Xbox One's CPU speed. Now, just yesterday, I reported that there was rumors going around the internet that this clock speed of the AMD Jaguar, the CPU inside the Xbox One, of course, is not actually 1.6 gigahertz. There are some rumors going about this actually 1.9. Now, there's some further rumours that those previous rumours were actually inaccurate, and the clock speed is actually 1.6, which is what was actually originally expected. Now, I'm going to go into this in a little bit of detail, because this is actually kind of confusing. So, how it basically works is that yesterday we were talking about the fact that the AMD Jaguar CPUs have the north bridge on the chip. <coughs> Therefore you can do a pretty reasonable amount of math and you can say that half the uh, clock speed of the AMD Jaguar and then you times that by the width of the memory bus and so for example if we go with 950 and you times that by 256 the 950 would be the clock speed of the north bridge 256 would be the width for the bus, and then you take whatever number you get and you divide that by uh, 8, then you get 30 gigabytes per second, which, according to slides, is the numbers that Microsoft have been reporting. Okay, sounds great. So the clock speed inside the Xbox One is 1.9 gigahertz, right? Well, this is where it starts to get a bit confusing. You see, there are a couple of websites that are reporting to have exclusive information regarding the Xbox One. Leaks, if you will. I'm not going to give you guys a complete list, but there are numerous, including Extreme Tech, VG Leaks, Semi Accurate, Tom's Hardware, and several others. And to be honest with you, it's very difficult to start to understand what one's doing what, because there are two sites that are starting to compete right now. I'm not going to uh, tell you which ones they are for professionalism's sake, but I'm pretty sure it's become pretty obvious by now. If not, a few minutes of Googling will give you the answers. Now, one says, now, you remember that the reason we get the 30 gigabytes per second is because of the coherent memory bandwidth. We know that is tied in to the CPU's MMU. Now, one website, or a couple of websites actually, are reporting, um, this is even including IGN, but I don't really trust them too much because of, well, that's not very professional of me, but whatever. Um, see, that's what you get when you're like, you know, really focused, you don't really think about what you're saying. I shouldn't really say that, but I don't really trust them too well with tech. I trust them with games, but not so much with the tech. Um, but IGN and some other websites are reporting that the clock speed of the Xbox One is based on 1.9 gigahertz, and they're using this because of the coherent memory bandwidth. There are other websites which are reporting this is not true. There are other websites which are reporting that these numbers are not taking into account overhead. And the argument for this is that you can do pretty much exactly the same math that we've already gone through. Um, but this time you can put it to the ESRAM bus and the ESRAM now then becomes 204.8 which is pretty much the speed of the ESRAM so there you have it, two completely conflicting pieces of information so which one is right it's kind of up to you to decide personally if I had to put my money on it I would go with the fact that I don't think it's 1.9 gigahertz. That's a guess. The only reason I don't think it is, is because there seems to be more evidence to show that it's not 1.9 gigahertz. Uh, the ESRAM clock speed is the one that seems the most damning. The reason, however, that I'm not 100% sure that this isn't the case, is because a couple of websites are reporting that the coherent memory bandwidth is factoring in overhead. In other words, this is actual memory bandwidth. So, I'm not really sure which one to go with. Um, one of the websites actually said uh, pretty much that they have more information from Microsoft 
But they're under NDA, and they can't, well, basically unveil some information because they are under the NDA. In other words, they spoke to the engineer. Um, this is me basically putting the words in their mouth, but this is pretty much the, the top and bottom of it. They spoke to the engineers in Microsoft at whatever conference it was. I think it may have been the Hot Chips conference, which, of course, is a source of most of these rumors. They spoke to them, and then they said to them, well, here's a bunch of information, and they used that to start writing some guides, but after they basically gave them some information, they said, well, you can't actually say some of this stuff uh, because the console's not out and we are all under NDAs. And so the websites, a couple of them are saying, well, you know, it looks really good or it's very impressive, but we can't say more because we're under NDA. So I remember there was actually... Um, a while back at the hot well at the hot chips conference there was actually some slides which weren't unveiled um there was a couple of other websites i know this is getting ridiculous now but this is how many websites you have to check i think i must have checked like a dozen and a couple of them are basically carbon copies of other websites but there are some that you can tell are slightly different angles and so on so they're different slides or slightly different slides so in other words they're taken at slightly different times and so on or in some cases they are quotes and there's another set that was going around and they said that they had more information regarding the audio but they've not popped up yet at least according to what I'm finding now so it's obvious uh, that there is some information that is still being withheld and I don't know um, it's kind of tricky to say what exactly it is so there you have it guys, I'm reporting all of the news, obviously I'm not showing favouritism, if there's a piece of news that comes out I'll report it and then you know, give you guys the maths behind it and then I'll do research and then try and debunk it or confirm it later on because that's the fair way to go. I prefer that method because if someone has a better idea or they've done something else, they've found something else, you guys can report it and it just means that we're all on top of the latest news and it means that everyone's apprised of the latest information. It, in my opinion, that's a lot better than keeping people in the dark until there's a definite answer because there is no definite answer yet. Um, yeah, it, there really isn't. So I'm just going to clarify one more time in case you guys aren't familiar or don't didn't understand. Basically, the argument is that... One side is saying that the coherent memory bandwidth um, is fine as is. In other words, they are saying that all of the memory bandwidth is accounted for and there are no overheads. Other websites are saying that the, webs that the overheads are not being accounted for and therefore the numbers are wrong and therefore the clock speed of 1.9 gigahertz is wrong and therefore it's most likely to be 1.6 personally I am going with the fact that I personally believe right now uh, based on the evidence only that I think it's 1.6 gigahertz it's possible it's faster it's impossible to say and I'll tell you why because we don't know the final clock speeds of the silicon yet in other words for all we know Microsoft could unveil that they miraculously increased the clock speed the last minute exactly the way they did with the GPU. It's pretty much impossible, although I would have thought they would have unveiled this by now. So, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it's true. I'm hoping it is 1.9 gigahertz. I'm also hoping the same for the PlayStation 4. But I guess we'll just have to see. So, you guys could do your own research on this. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a debate war for a while now. And I have a bigger feeling that a lot of the stuff we're not going to know really until the Xbox One's actually within our possession. In other words, we actually own them uh, and we can start doing things which don't rely on, you know, crappy images or resolutions that are basically, you know, a couple of pixels wide by a couple of pixels tall or based on slides or PR or marketing speak or whatever. So who the hell knows, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it at least food for thought. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Bye for now. Take care.